The Punch TV. I don't know if I'm going to the Punch TV. So, I'm going to say, any day, the kind of other channel here, and I just say, Oba subscribe there my no like and watch share we will subscribe jawa join share or comment session ho and so e dey aka ho e bu sia for say wa unim say the punch tv there about the current stories na political affairs there yeah say the punch tv there them ba ko pe e bu sia for say amle america say story be flow so have a buffer ma ma chese a pai a ma chese e gentle ha o bia atwe ne sire ne abasa e bu sia for ma yenko yenko hwe story na mra ye ba ye de mu nchire mu nyina e be bremo Tonight, though, we're going to begin the punch analysis. TV. Before we look at her strength and her weaknesses, we're going to begin the analysis by uh, looking at what else Professor uh, John Dramani Mahama could have done. Where else could he, she, he have gone uh, to demonstrate, the, to, to select the running mate? So we begin, for instance, with Nathan Kofi Boache. If John Mahama had selected Nick, Nathan Kofi Boache, and I, I'd like to reiterate the position of that small book I talked about, the American journalist wrote a book entitled, was talking about American politics and politics of electioneering, and the book is entitled, If It Had Gone the Other Way. And he writes, it's a very interesting book that you should get. I just can't remember the author. I'll get it one day and I'll show you here. Uh, he talks about if the election had gone the other way. So, for instance, he picks a maybe 1984 election, the one that was won by Reagan, or especially he picks 1988. That was between uh, uh, Bush and uh, Dukakis for the Democratic Party. And he says, if the election had gone Dukakis' way, this person would have been national security advisor. This person would have been minister for finance, the treasury in America. This person would have been that. Then he picks another election in the United Kingdom, say 1997, and said, if the election had gone the other way, very, very interesting, interesting book to read. So that's what I'm going to do now in the next 10 minutes. If John Mahama had selected Kofi Boachi, Nathan Kofi Boachi, what would have been the strength, advantages, and the uh, perhaps the disadvantages as well. So Nathan Kofi Boache is, a, um, is a, uh, a COP, Commissioner of Police, who could have been IGP. He's retired right now, and he's thought to be a very good policeman, but he also has controversies. Now, if President Mahama had announced today that Nathan Kofi Boache was his running mate, the first thing he would have achieved, which he may not achieve with General Nopokwajiman, is the sensationalism of the announcement. Sensation. Kofi Boache would have immediately brought some sensationalism to the, to the presidential ticket of John Mahama. Just, just for today, just by the announcement. Now he says, Jenano Pukwajiman, and you can look at all media houses. It's not, it's not sensational. It's not, it's not turning anything as it did in 2020 because she was the first woman and people didn't know this has widely been expected. So the question you ask yourself is, if you're a presidential candidate, particularly for the opposition party, every announcement that you make must carry a certain oomph, must carry a certain sensation, and must carry a certain aura. It doesn't mean that when you, when, once you don't do that, the candidate is not a good candidate. No, we're just analyzing what the Kofi Boache announcement today would have meant if, if, if President Mahama would have announced that Nathan Kofi Boache is my running mate today, it would have created a lot of sensation in the media. It would have created a lot of conversation among Ghanaians. And that conversation would be talking about the NDC ticket, talking about his prospects. People would have begun to look at Kofi Boache in the way in which he's going to manage the campaign. Kofi Boache as vice president, what is he going to do? Uh, people who like police will think something is going to happen. People who look at it differently. All sorts of angles. And then there will be a big tribal angle as well. Kofi Boache is a, an integral part of the Ashanti em Empire, if you like. And he has a very good relationship with the uh, Ashanti Hine, the overlord of Ashanti. Because Kofi Boache was also the regional commander of Ashanti region in 2016's elections. So if you name Kofi Boache, these are the things that are going to okay. However, what are the disadvantages? Disadvantages people are going to say that Kofi Boache had difficulties with the police, with the drug issues in the 2008, Stagor and all of that. Those are things that his opponents will bring up. But in terms of the regional distribution, the regional demographics, the MPP are focusing on being able to secure their territory in Ashanti and probably increase it. You know that the MPP decreased its uh, votes in Ashanti in the last election between 16 and uh, 20 in 2020, in 16, the MPP was doing 76% of the total number of votes valid in Ashanti. They won 76% of it. In 2020, the MPP won 70%. Uh, so six percentage points lost. The NDC is hoping that they can eat further into that. 
into the Ashanti situation. For the NDC to do well nationally, looking at the numbers, they always need to win between 28 and 35 percent of votes in Ashanti. If they can do 35 percent, that's really significant. Uh, 28 is okay. So the Kofi Boache angle would have been one of those that would be used to bring on young Ashanti people who are either disenchanted with the MPP, something like that. The votes that Kofi Boache can get for the NDC in Ashanti, Jena no Pokwajiman cannot uh, get it for them in Ashanti. The votes that Kofi Boache, they are, they are complete different contrast. The votes that Kofi Boache will get in Accra among young people, especially young male people, uh, and also to energize the campaign, get them to, to talk about the campaign. Kofi Boache is going to be on radio and television speaking for John Mohammed's uh, ticket. That would have been huge, I have to say, in terms of media. I don't know whether that is going to convert to votes or not, but in terms of the media appearance and the media engagement and the media platform, platforms that Kofi Boache was going to appear on, that was going to be significant, very, very significant. It was going to take the NDC campaign into another level, so long as media is concerned. As I keep saying, whether that's what translates into votes in the ballot box, I don't know. But in terms of our analysis, this is what would have happened if uh, Kofi Boache was the candidate uh, for the NDC. The other point uh, that will downside for Kofi Boache's candidate would be that he's not an old, real member of the NDC. He's not a party person as such. He's friends with John Mahama, that is true. He has friends both ways, but he's not been seen as a party person. And John Mahama is, 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 a, is going to be, if he wins, he's going to be a one-term president. So immediately he selects a running mate that the, the thinking about, is he thinking about the inheritance? Is he thinking about the future? Would Kofi Boachi be able to hold the storm, hold the weather together uh, two years into the government if John Mahama were to be elected? He, as vice president, then, would he be able to hold it together when the party, the NDC party, will be looking for a new leader? Is he prepared to put himself in? Will other people in the N NDC be happy that Kofi Boache has come in straight to the top as vice president and now he's pushing to be the leader of a party that he didn't help build, to be leader of a party that he's not an integral part of, to be leader of the party that he hasn't, that, 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 that. All of those arguments were going to go through President Mohammed's mind if he was thinking about Kofi Boache. But that's part of the downside. But the upside, this announcement of Nathan Kofi Boache, if it had happened, would have created significant sensation. Let's go to the next uh, candidate, Togbi Afede. Now, Togbi Afede uh, was, was talked about at some point two weeks ago or so to be uh, John Mohammed's running mate. What would have been the ad advantages that Togbi Afede will bring? Uh, let's look at the advantages before we look at the demerits. The advantages Togbi Afede will bring will be the economic conversation. You know, uh, the, up till now, as Tony Edu of the NDC said, up till now, the NDC have not been able to really find a replacement or a match for Dr. Baumia in terms of his articulation of economics. You can say that he's a liar, he's a liar he's a liar, whatever. But in terms of Dr. Baumia's presentation and his articulation of the economic situation, the economic policy, the economic um, um, algorithms of Ghana, how it works and what should be done and all of that, the NDC have not been able to find any person in their party that has that kind of understanding and be able to articulate it. They may have the understanding, but they surely have not been able to articulate it. Case okay, Salato Forsen, minority leader, is supposed to have a PhD, but he certainly doesn't articulate like Dr. Baromia does. Togwe Afede would have presented an answer to that because he certainly knows a lot about, about that situation. He's been on the board of Bank of Ghana, and he's been a private sector operator. He's been part of all the borrowing that the Ministry of Finance has been doing. His company, SAS, has been part of those borrowings. So he understands. He has a bird's eye view of the situation. He would have been able to com campaign on the economic situation and convince people that he knows what he's talking about, he knows what he's doing, and what the MPP is doing is wrong. He would have been able to say that. If Togwe Afede says that people are perhaps going to believe it a little bit more than Jena Nopokwajima, what Togwe Afede will give you in an economic presentation, economic analysis, Jena Nopokwajima will never give you that. Togwe Afede's downside is that he probably may not have political footprints. You know, he's not a politician like that. He's, he's a football politician in Hearts of Folk, yes. But in terms of political footprints across the country, he certainly doesn't have it. And then you're going to ask yourself, where is his constituency? Who people are going to vote for him? His main constituency, in terms of uh, the elections that we've seen for a long time, is going to be the Volta region. Toby is a proud son of the Volta region, and he's also the chief there. If he had been nominated, he would have had to abdicate. The Volta region is where you can determine that Toby is going to have a World Bank. But the question will be, why must the NDC select somebody for votes in the Volta region? Don't they already have Volta region votes? Yes, they do. The NDC already has Volta region votes. 
But the question is always asked. The MPP always have Ashanti region votes, but they always select people from Ashanti. Now that they've selected a northern uh, presidential candidate, the party is almost resolved on the basis that they are going to select a, a running mate from Ashanti. But they do certainly have their Ashanti votes already. But why are they always going for candidates there? So that argument has come in, in the NDC circles back and forth. Why don't you take a Voltaire? And they say, but we already have the Volta votes. J.J. Rollins has settled it for us. And then they say, well, but the MPP still go back to Ashanti. So that's the group of people who were thinking that you have to put Togbe Afedi in the saddle. So Togbe would have gotten the Volta votes. But does the NDC need Volta votes? Perhaps not. Come to the middle class, Togbe would have been able to articulate the position of the middle class. Would he have been preferred to Baumia? I don't know. You have to look at the presentation of both. We, when I look at Dr. Baumia's presentation and people who look at his presentation, you cannot but fall in love with him. You can decide what you want about what the NDC says about him. But if you listen to Dr. Baumia doing a presentation, you cannot but fall in love with him. The guy is extremely articulate. He's very sensible. And he doesn't say, look at the campaign. Which, which loose talk can you present Dr. Baumia have said? Which one? You haven't heard. If he started campaigning in 2008 and 2012, he's been speaking. You can't say that Dr. Baumia says something that is loose talk for the many years of his political campaigning. So when Dr. Baumia is articulating something, he's very convincing. Togbe Afede might be able to do a little bit of that, but I don't know whether he can match it, but people can decide. So if John Mahama are taking point at Togbe Afede, in terms of the sensation that I talked about Kofi Bwache, yes, there again, also, the sensation would have been available for Togbe Afede as well, but he didn't get the selection. Let's look at the, uh, let me first clean this out. And then let's look at the uh, next, the next individual, Kwame Wadaku. Okay. If the announcements had come today in favor of Kwame Wadaku, between Iwadaku and Kofi Bwache, I think that he would have had the highest pitch of the success. The punch TV. Given his age and given his spread around you know, the sensationalism, Iwadako would have had the highest pitch of it. And it would have gained the NDC campaign some percentage points. His age as well, his connection with the youth, the fact that he was a parliamentary candidate and was able to mobilize students at the University of Ghana, it was when he ran in parliament in, in 2012 or so that the NDC got the highest number of votes in the University of Ghana polling stations in Ayawaso West Wogod. It demonstrates that Mr. Iwadako has a certain connection with the youth and he's able to mobilize it and that would have set the campaign differently if a had been be made a running mate and he had decided that he's going into the universities in KNUST to organize a walk over there that's his alma mater by the way he goes to Legon to organize a walk over there that's where he campaigned to be parliamentary candidate he goes to UDS he's the kind of person that could have the magnetic attraction from students and young people to follow him and to work on the campaign. That's what Iwadako would have brought to John Mahama's ticket. I think it would have been a very sensational ticket. And in terms of youth mobilization effectiveness, Iwadako may have been able to achieve that in a much bigger way. Uh, also, Iwadako comes from the Ashanti region. He is famously known uh, to come from uh, Jabin where his father was a chief. So he is an integral part of Ashanti and in terms of mobilizing to secure Ashanti votes away. So I'm thinking that Iwadako would have been a particularly very, very good and sensational ticket. So we move on to the next stanza of the conversation. To do that, let's break through with Jenwana Pukwajman's montage. Congratulations, madam. She is the NDC presidential running mate.
I was saying for a story, no, and I, yeah, Koshe, and the Aban, not just say, and some of course were Ghana, and some a course were Krum, just say, the Hyans will be your data now about in ten times or so. I was saying for just say, who bit me a sreya, who bit me a ja, when you bit me a ja, not just say, a social media, no, so the or so be a it's me a basso said, yeah, yeah, and call for a case, a digitan, a yen, I. Yen Blasso, ne a so ancient. Me, I am a digimedia, which I am a feminine and I add my whom is so now feminine and why jar major so now my mouth pee out. Peace out. The map will be a crab about my same media college. My same media college, a school, power, a church TV so, any radio so, you made ye. Ah, ya sure, ye oak massy, a tone suit. Baby, I will be out, person about my same media college. Now the whom you made ye didn't hold more. Yentie Jumedia Idino Amansai Media College. I say we see a baby with media mu. Ana ope say we kunu baby biara ifa media hu. Ensu eche kwa. Amansai Media College. Oh homa. Yawa atua chwe fa wa kwadri ye wa di chwe mu. Na instead yo ni ye newsroom di e e di chwe mu. Once em chwe mu no ye chwe baby to say kasi ebo akenka ni sinicha ni bebra eke kahu. Wa multimedia mu so ye chwe baby to say. Sini, Mfoni SCSA, Mfoni Micha, ni bebra eke kanhu. Ye betu minsu abwao, ama wode na oche pe e sunye bribi wo, nkita hu die e juma ahu duwe nyine mu. E san se ye wo yan kasa yan kasa fo ni minti, abu e biyara, ye ma yan adisu yan fo kwa yin, ma okwa yodye ya chwe wo adisu yan den mu no. A chwe fo e hu, e kamye e se obi biyara wo le bosom chwe ya se e ni ma abako se ma e fa in su yin hu. Me nyan bo fra kitu e bi wa ha, ono su se o ni ma abako se ma e fa, Lek busum chengon. Ebu siya fwo ya mama kwa ba eba gana pages tv so. Emra son siya de trending issues niya koswo. Ewo abe fo ten time fi diye ni so ebe sommo. Mi din na neje wa kwa diye. Ama ensay media college. Ya maw diwe hiye biya wo inkuta hundi yimu.